Hi guys, welcome back to the desk corner. I'm here with the promised late art haul from the holiday season. I have a small haul for you um, that I'm excited to share with you and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing is actually something I got as a gift, but due to the cover obviously and just how beautiful this notebook really is, I was thinking I could use it for something art related. Now it's just a normal notebook, it's not like a planner, it doesn't have like a planner calendar layout or anything like that, it's just blank. If you guys have any ideas of how I could utilize this as an artist, let me know in the comments down below because I love things like this, journals, planners, those things are always fun for me, but I don't always know how to properly utilize them and sometimes they just go sitting there untouched. Next we have this Faber-Castell click and go water pot. So this is primarily for traveling. I'm really excited to open these things. I'm gonna open them on camera because they've just been sitting here on my desk since they arrived and I have been dying to, to take a look at them. Here's what it looks like. As you can see, it's compact because you can just click it open, hopefully more seamlessly than I'm doing here. This is not graceful at all but you just click it open and it's a full water pot for you to use with your watercolors and then I'm assuming it's easy to just pop it back into place like that. So obviously that's really useful for traveling, um, but also if you're just feeling lazy and you don't want to use a glass or something like that for your water. I really like that and I like that it's not breakable like the way that my glass cups are. Yeah, I could use plastic, but I like to just, for some reason, torture myself and use glass. Um, cups for when I do watercolor. <laughs> Next we've actually got some resin and I decided to buy this because I have a couple of wooden coasters that I have not sealed yet that I painted quite a while ago in the summertime and I thought I don't have anything to really seal them with and so I bought some resin. Hopefully this will last me for a while. I've also got this wooden box which I'm not sure if I showed you guys. I cannot remember if when I got it I had made a video so let me show you guys really quick so much going on my desk right now I got this wooden box and right now it's holding some pastels that I have yet to try and I was thinking of maybe doing a decoration on this at some point creating an artwork on here with acrylic paint I don't know yet what the idea is but it would be really fun to paint this box on the channel so I figured that would be another thing I would need the resin for and there's probably a couple other things that I have laying around that I could seal as well hopefully this is good for that it comes with the hardener and then the resin itself and you're supposed to mix it um, one to one so we're gonna see how that works and hopefully it works well for wood but I'm pretty sure it should be just fine probably gonna do this outside on the porch though because I'm not really sure if I want this to get on my desk in any capacity I already managed to get the resin on my fingers and just attempted to clean it off and now let's look at the last two things we have here and I actually want to thank Miranda Watson here because I was watching one of her videos a couple weeks back I saw her unboxing these Mission Gold watercolors and using these travel brushes as well. She had everything linked in her description box, luckily, and I decided to be very naughty with my gift card slash holiday money and bought another watercolor set. In my defense, though, this one is a lot smaller than the set I currently have. I'll compare them later. But this would work very well as like a travel palette or something that I even take outside, something more mobile versus the larger palette that I currently have. And obviously the travel brushes were meant to go along with it. We can take a look at the brushes first since that will take less time. They come in this really gorgeous case that I would be afraid to get dirty actually. And there should be three. There's the third one. There are different sizes, obviously. They come in this plastic wrap. And so you can see that there's three different sizes and then I believe you're just supposed to twist this part off and I think it screws back in or clicks back in. Looks like it screws back in. And there you go. You have a travel watercolor brush. So this one is a size 12. Let's look at the other sizes size 8 
and a size 4, so three round brushes. Obviously very easy to pop back in when you are done using them, and that's part of why I decided to go ahead and buy this. I figured that it would be worth it as I do have a couple of trips planned for 2023, and if you're taking art supplies on the go, even if you're not traveling, it's always great to have these types of supplies handy. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back in their little case for now. I absolutely love the leather case and how gorgeous that is, you guys. So next we've got the Mission Gold watercolor set. And this one I want to open carefully because the box is very pretty. Don't want to ruin it. Let's take a look at the back here if you guys can see. Um, it does have the swatches on the back and I believe it does come with a swatch sheet. So very carefully I'm taking these out. Again, I'm just going to link her video down below because really I got this entire idea from her video, so you can see more details in that video. And there it is! It's a cute little compact set. So if you see everything all together, that's how much space this entire travel watercolor set might take up. About that much space relative to my hands. Not bad. Not bad at all, you guys, especially to put in a little bag. Moving everything else to the side, we can now focus on the Mission Gold watercolors. Let's go ahead and open this and take a look. These are so pretty. Let me zoom in closer so that that plastic on the side isn't too distracting. This is gorgeous, you guys. And how do I, how do I open it? I just, I just don't know. Oh my goodness, that was hard to open. I cut that part out because um, it kind of shook the desk and therefore the camera, which is attached to the desk. And I thought I was going to break it right open the wrong way, but luckily it was just kind of stuck together really well. So you can see that this part comes out like this and you're able to mix colors here so you don't have to worry about bringing your own palette for that. Or you can also use the top here too, so you have lots of space. Then it comes with this swatch sheet, which I knew about because I remembered that from Miranda's video. I think I might swatch the colors today. Just because making a swatch sheet on its own requires so much time, but since this set already comes with one, it won't be very hard for me to just fill it in now. So I might as well just make that today in this video since we have time. And then this is what the set looks like. I'm pretty sure this is removable and you can add it to the other side. Well, let's just leave that as is for now and let's go ahead and get to swatching. It's supposed to go this way it looks like. Let's talk a little bit about the colors included in this palette. It's a 24 color palette, quite a bit smaller than my Sennelier set, and it's still not that small of a palette. 24 colors is still quite a lot for paint because of all the mixing and everything. Lemon yellow and permanent yellow light were the first two colors after the Chinese white. And I do find that a lot of palettes tend to be yellow heavy. Now I don't mind these two colors being there, but you'll see what I mean in a little bit as we continue to the green side of things. Permanent yellow deep, red orange, and permanent red deep are all very nice, gorgeous colors. And I think that they are a nice addition to this set as it feels like there's an equal amount of each color here. We also have Rose Matter, and that one looks a bit less pink um, to the naked eye compared to how the swatch looks on the video. Quinacridone, magenta, and crimson lake. And that bright violet color, which I think is very gorgeous. We have a couple of blues. There's actually quite a bit of blues in this set, and I do like that. I wish there was an indigo though, because that is probably my favorite color to have in a set, although I do have it in my Sunlier set, so I guess that doesn't matter too much. There's our ultramarine light. That's a hard color to mix sometimes. Then we have peacock blue, viridian, and bamboo green. Now after this, you'll see a couple of the other greens which kind of fall on the yellow side. We have yellow green, and then we also have sap green. And then there's green gold as well, which is probably why I felt like the palette was a bit yellow heavy for me. I wouldn't get rid of that yellow ochre though, as that's very useful. Then we have our Burnt Sienna and Red Brown and Van Dyke Brown, as well as Ivory Black. I would have preferred something like a Sepia maybe, but that's okay. Maybe one of those yellows could have been replaced with something like that. But at least we do get the Ivory Black. I don't think that ink was quite so dry when I went over it with the white, oh well. 
that's what that looks like. I think this is a really gorgeous palette and I'm very excited to use it and also I'm excited to bring this along with me on some of my travels this year. Thank you again Miranda for bringing this palette to my attention and with that you guys I think that's it for today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching as always. Bye you guys! <laughs>